you forget to do this, your interlock circuit won't be made and you'll be going nowhere. I can't do it anymore. I can't do these stupid spider remix jokes, please. I'm fed up with this the meme. Let it die. Let spider remix this. <laughs> the class 175 is a British two or three car diesel multiple unit, and its big brother, the class 180, is an unreliable coke can of a five car high speed diesel multiple unit, both part of a family of trains called Caradia 1000. Built in the turn of the 21st century by Alston, in the most appropriate place of Birmingham, the Caradia 1000s have been forced against their will in transporting passengers and keeping engineers employed as they pull their hair out for over 20 years now. Since these trains are part of the same family and, to the shock of nobody, share similar strengths and weaknesses between them, I will save your time by reviewing them together. The 175 can be seen serving places such as Wales, 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 West Wales, North Wales, East Wales, South Wales and Manchester. The 181 the other hand can regularly be seen, stabled in the depot at Derby Etches Park, idling with a broken gearbox in the stabling sidings near Cricklewood, broken down in Heaton Depot or occasionally serving the likes of Leicester, Nottingham, or Sunderland. They also used to serve London Puddington, Hull and the West Country in the past, but not anymore for reasons you will soon find out. So have these trains been good over the years, or are they nothing more than a prime example of just because you can, doesn't mean you should. Let's find out. The fleet of class 175s are comprised of 11 2 car sets, and 16 3 car sets, for a grand total of 27 units. They could be considered the flagship of Welsh inter-regional and intercity services, even if they cannot run on certain routes, such as the Cambrian Line. Today they are all operated by the government-run Transport for Wales, after Kiel Asami and Arriva got evicted out of the country. The 1418s on the other hand were designed to run higher speed intercity services, though seeing them run semi-fast journeys wasn't too uncommon. All sets are being used today either by Grand Central or East Midlands Railway, however unit number 110 has been made a 4 car unit. I originally thought this was because the carriage got stolen overnight, but the real reason of it suffering from corrosion damage is honestly funnier to me. The introduction of the Caradia 1000 was probably the biggest omen the Department of Transport would get, second only to their bank balance after beginning construction of high speed 2. I miss a few hiccups here and there, including supposed issues with trains rolling away with the brakes applied. The 175s entered service in June 2000. The first 180 was unveiled shortly prior to that, and was ready to enter service. One and a half years later. This delay was significant enough to force first Great Western to dig up old class 47 locos to fill in the gap. Even when they were introduced, the 180s brought along problem after problem throughout their lives. Whether it was used by first Great Western, Hull trains, Grand Central or for some stupid reason, Northern, the trains were great at reaffirming the UK's continued fear of diesel hydraulic traction. But Daniel, you ask, what's wrong with these trains being diesel hydraulic? Aren't most DMUs running in the UK diesel hydraulic anyway? Correct. With a few exceptions, including the likes of the 172, Voyagers and Civity, pretty much all other diesel multiple units in the UK, use a hydraulic transmission. In fact, the class 185 uses the exact same engine type and 3 speed transmission as the 180. So why doesn't it keep breaking down every 6 microseconds unlike the Caradius? Three core reasons, the latter only applying to the 180. It wasn't made by Alstom. It also wasn't made in the Midlands we thrived and thus were built to a half decent standard. And thirdly, notice how all of these trains don't exceed 100 miles per hour. That's a good thing. The 180 is the only high speed diesel hydraulic multiple unit in the world, and there's a very good f***ing reason as to why. Diesel hydraulics can have advantages running when compared to diesel electrics in certain situations, but none of the upsides include running at high speed for several hours a day through engines producing up to 750 horsepower. Each of them. The high running speed of the components not only means that they wear out faster, but it also generates more heat. This results in the 180s being rather susceptible to catching fire. 
to the point where threads discussing it end up being rather nonchalant about it. This is why the likes of the Voyagers and Meridians are diesel electric instead. Same amount of power, same top speed, but better performance and reliability for long distance services. And the fact they weren't built in Birmingham helps too. On the plus side, the 175 has only caught fire in 2004, 2009, 2011, 2017, 2018, and in 2019. Twice. Fun fact, the 175 and 180 can theoretically couple up and operate together as they are technically compatible with each other. But I fear that if done. It would instantly cause a black hole to form as nothing that unreliable could physically exist in one space at a time. The Caradia 1000s are fast. With enough fire extinguishers provided on board, the 175s can have a maximum acceleration rate of 0.6 meters per second squared, roughly on par with the likes of the Turbo Stars. Aided by a two-speed gearbox, a top speed of 100 miles per hour can be reached, though I only know of one route they run on where they can reach said speed, that being the Kruta Stockport line. I'm unsure of the maximum acceleration rate of the 180, but as shown off in the HST video, the units are fast enough to easily beat said trains to 125 miles per hour, provided all engines are working. That alone is a dice roll and a half I know, but it's still pretty good. I've also heard that it's faster than the IET on diesel mode, which I can believe too. The Caradius both feature an additional form of braking via the use of hydrodynamic retarders. These allow the trains to reduce brake wear by using the power of fluid dynamics to slow down the train from high speed. Similar to how a coach can slow down using the same system. However, because your standard National Express coach is built to a better standard than the Caradius, this unique feature has predictably been switched off, and is now one less issue the engineers have to deal with. Now they only have 527 left every week. On an unrelated note, my stocks in standard brake discs and brake pads have risen for some reason. Anyway what are these trains like to ride on? Both trains share interiors that are similar to each other, so we'll look over the major differences as we go along. We are presented with an excellent 2 plus 2 seating arrangement throughout the coaches. Window alignment, whilst not perfect, is honestly pretty good compared to other trains like the 390. The pitch of the seats does take some time getting used to, but it's still very comfortable to sit in for long journeys, especially with the air conditioning. When it works. Alongside some armrests, adequate size tables are provided behind the seats, and on refurbished units, USB and standard plug charging points have now been installed next to the seats, which I certainly appreciate. Eagle-eyed viewers may notice on the 175's the inclusion of Welsh language on the signage. This is actually a legal requirement for trains predominantly running in Wales, and not because May give my gunny a small bob log eight fell my demo and e three and no bob log if Camry Cine Syrad. You can hear the 180 loudly change gear if you sit in the front half of the coach when accelerating past 60 and 90 miles per hour. I should find it by all accounts irritating, but the transmission and engine sound on these units is so good, and I love it so much. I'll link a great example of this sound in the video description, since my own recordings are rubbish in comparison. The 175 sounds similar at idle and departing, though not as loud at high speed. Each coach on the Caradius has a toilet located in the vestibule. Assuming the door was built to a half decent standard, you'll find that upon entering, that the toilet is a bit on the small side. It's not as bad as some other trains like the class 755, but I recently rode on some Mark III coaches and the toilet and that was much better in terms of space. On the plus side, there's a large luggage rack placed on the opposite side to the toilet, which is a good use of space, if you ask me. Though of course, the door into the vestibule needs to be fully operational in order for you to access it. One of the driving coaches features a disabled toilet, which is of a really good size. Big enough for you to stand in the middle and role play as a helicopter propeller whilst you wait for your train to depart. No real complaints to report here. A pair of wheelchair spaces are provided in this coach as well, with tip-up seats shown here. One of the intermediate coaches of the 180 has a buffet shop, where you can purchase hot food and drinks at a price. On Grand Central, you can even order the food from your seat, and have it delivered like a poor version of Deliveroo. The 175's lack a buffet, though if the stars have aligned, 
a member of staff may be seen pushing a cart full of orange juice and Kit Kats to your seat. Thanks to the exploit I mentioned in the 91 video, I grabbed a cheap first class advance single ticket and rode on a Grand Central 180 from Doncaster back home to London. Specifically the one you're seeing here, and look at this. Now this is a really good looking first class section. Big leather seats, bigger tables and even a small galley to prepare sausage rolls and espresso martinis is all really appreciated. I was even provided with a free bottle of water through my journey by the lovely staff on board. Thank you for saving me £1.50. Another nice thing is that an additional wheelchair space is provided in first class on the 180, located next to the small galley at the end of the coach. Thank you Alston for remembering that passengers in wheelchairs are still passengers. The 175 doesn't have first class because lol. It's also worth mentioning. That the East Midlands 180s have updated display screens at the end of the coaches which show oh wait. Someone forgot the boot disk again. Well since it's almost a blank screen. I'm going to take advantage of this by freeze framing it. And shopping in a family friendly image in its place. Mwah. The future of the Caradia 1000 can be described as a mixed bag to say the least. The 175s are expected to be replaced by the upcoming fleet of class 197s. I'm not looking forward to these units, but that's all I can say at the moment as they are not in service at the date of making this video. Don't try and be a smart ass about it. Future commenters. The fact that East Midlands Railway replaced their HSTs with 180s is proof enough that we indeed live in a society. They will most likely be the first trains to be vote kicked once their fleet of 5 car IETs enter into service. I'm not looking forward to those either. Grand Central have been using the class 180 for the past 13 years, but if they got rid of them right now, they would have nothing to use, and that's significantly worse than using the 180. Grand Central have not stated any plans to replace their fleet with IETs yet, so just for fun, let's come up with a hypothetical and dreamlike replacement. In my perfect world, we would replace the 180 with a fleet of 6 coach bisexual Stadlerkis double decker units. These would have the insane acceleration on electric mode, a top speed of 125 miles per hour and diesel engines to get them to Bradford and Sunderland. They will have seats as good as the Belgian I-10 intercity coaches, a free cat girl included with every ticket, and will also have onboard vending machines that dispense free money, just to remind you that this will never happen. Give me a shout when the inevitable IETs are ordered to boot these trains off the line. Conclusion. Take a look at these Netherland Dwarf bunnies. Look how cute they are. You wanna stroke them, don't you? Well be careful, because every time you do, there's a 40% chance that you'll get an electric shock. This is my analogy for the Caradius. I cannot express in words how close these trains come to being some of my favorite diesel multiple units. They are comfortable, well refined have a sensibly designed interior, have great engine sounds, and in the case of the 180, are a candidate for being the best looking train in the UK, but lol no, they just had to cartwheel at the end of the race and break all their bones before the finish line. Why were they built in the Midlands? Why the diesel hydraulic transmission in a high speed train? So many questions, but so little time to fully answer them. The sad reality will most likely see these trains instantly getting sacrificed to the scrap god once the new trains roll into service. It's a shame, if you ask me, but unless a preservation group has a tax haven in Panama, I doubt they'd be able to afford the upkeep of a single unit. And honestly, these trains deserved much better. At least the class 47 works enough to be still used by rail operators today and that's saying something for a locomotive built in the 60s. Now you know my thoughts on the Caradia 1000. Go out there, and remember that despite the continued strike action across the UK railway network, there's an upside nobody has thought about. Trains can't be delayed, cancelled or catch fire, if they don't run. Think about that next time.